Hello and uh, welcome all of you students. Let's continue with the next part from the unit four. As all of you know, we are discussing regarding the contents of operating system. So last time we have finished the part related with the uh, different types of the operating system. Uh, with the example and uh, comparison, we have seen the different kind of operating system. Now today's our topic is the what is deadlock and the conditions responsible for the deadlocks. Now this part also during the practical session I have discussed with some batch, but uh, for the some batches uh, uh, I might uh, I might not have discussed this part. That is the reason I am uh, uh, once again explaining you what exactly is the deadlock in the operating system and uh, because of which different condition. the deadlock can occur so uh, before we go to the actual technical uh, concept of deadlock in the operating system first we should discuss about the real life example of the deadlock what ex- to which kind of situation uh, we can call as a deadlock now uh, if you uh, as all of you know the in terms of uh, operating system uh, is nothing but the kind of system program uh, using which we can execute our application program and uh, we can uh, enjoy the different kind of services and uh, which is being also referred as a communication bridge or the interface between the user and the computer hardware so that is the definition of operating system that we are discussing from last number of lectures now in that if you see the different roles being performed by the operating system now in that main and most important role that is being performed by the operating system is nothing but the allocation of resources okay so whatever the resources need by the user when user is operating the computer allocation and controlling of that resources that is the main job performed by the operating system now if the uh, user want to uh, interact with the computer and uh, if the user want to access the services from the computer so that services can be accessed uh, only with the help of the different kind of resources available and allocation of that kind of resources to the computer and to carry out the different tasks that allocation is done by the operating system so uh, which kind of uh, <coughs> resources can be get allocated and control by the operating system that already you know the memory uh, processor and uh, devices in the devices different kind of devices hardware devices like uh, there can be a printer scanner pen drive whatever are the other devices that you connect to the computer and the devices which is present inside the computer so allocation of these different things uh, as a resources that is done by the operating system now so that this concept this point we need to be uh, understood uh, before we under, before we uh, discuss about the technical concept that is a deadlock in the operating system okay so i have uh, all of you understood uh, the main job of the operating system is nothing but the uh, allocation of uh, different resources like memory devices processor etc etc and a controlling of that different resources okay so uh, before we go to the uh, uh, actual technical concept of the deadlock in the operating system first let's discuss about the some real life example of deadlock in our uh, real life okay so uh, first you need to understand what exactly is the meaning of uh, deadlock so deadlock uh, if you see the general meaning of deadlock that is nothing but what uh not able to proceed uh, to do any kind of work remain remaining in the halted situation at some particular point understood so that is considered as a deadlock okay can't able to proceed to do some work because of some conditions okay and remain in the ideal position that is considered as a deadlock okay let's try to understand it the example so a real uh, world example we can take the example of traffic uh, okay uh, it is uh, uh, going in the only one direction okay and uh, let's consider there is a one particular bridge okay and that bridge you can see here this is the bri- uh, this is the bridge okay and this bridge is allowing the traffic to go uh, only one 
vehicle at a time okay this is a narrow bridge okay and using this narrow bridge only one vehicle can go from this side to this side or can go from this side to this side understood so that is the reason we are considering uh, uh, now so here for these vehicles for these different vehicles this bridge is nothing but the resource okay this bridge is nothing but the resource okay so here we have bridge considered as a resource where only one car can pass at a time okay and using this bridge as a bridge is narrow only one car can pass at a time okay now consider if there are the uh, two cars come from the one car uh, there are the two cars coming from the two different sides okay means like this situation that this car is coming from this side and there is another car which is coming from this side okay and both of them try to use the bridge at the same time now can any of this car will able to use the bridge can this red car will able to go on this side or can this yellow car can able to go this side no nobody will able to go from one side to the another side understood now because of that what will happen now in this case neither this red car is able to go on this side neither this yellow car will be able to go on this side okay now what will happen because of that so if none of this car neither this yellow car neither this red car ready to go back now in which condition this car can go from one side to the another side in which condition it will become possible now it will become possible only when this red car will go back to some distance or this yellow car will go back to some distance so that red car can use the bridge or if uh, or red car can go back some distance so that this yellow car can use the bridge but consider the situation neither this yellow car neither this red car is are ready to go back are ready to go back now in this situation what will happen if neither this car neither this car ready to go back then what will happen so in that case neither of these two car will able to use this bridge understood and because of that that, that particular because of that what will what will happen number of cars will get crowded at this point number of cars will get crowded at this point and in this situation i as i told you neither this yellow car able to go back neither red car able to go back now what will happen in this situation none of the car will able to use the bridge then understood and in this now what is this situation this situation is nothing but the complete halted situation complete halted understood and this complete halted situation is then referred as what then this situation is referred as what deadlock there is a complete there is a complete lock in using the bridge okay neither red car able to go back neither yellow car able to go back understood and because of that none of the car we were able, none of the car out of this two able to pass this particular bridge or able to use this bridge and go back from one side to the uh, go uh, and uh, go from one side to the another side okay so if as i said here if car arrives from the both the side and try to use the bridge then deadlock can appear if none of the car ready to go back understood so when red car will go back then it means that red car has released the resource bridge understood or if yellow car go back then it means what yellow car has released the resource as a bridge understood if yellow car go back then red car can go from this side to this side okay and if red car go back then yellow car may go to the other side understood but if none of the car ready to release the resource as a bridge then that particular kind of halted situation that halted situation is referred as what the deadlock understood so when deadlock happens it can be easily resolved okay so if deadlock happens here then it can be solved how it can be solved if one of the car go back to some distance understood if one of the car go back in the sense if one of the car roll back or if one of the car release the resource and allow other car to use that resource as a bridge okay so this is nothing but the real life example of the deadlock understood this is nothing but the real life example of deadlock understood 
in the similar way you can take the example of uh, uh, railway track also okay railway track also here there is a only one railway track and there are the train coming from this side also and train coming from this side also okay then what will happen none of the neither this train will able to pass from this side to this side neither this train able to pass from this side to this side an accident may occur if none of this train able none of this train will be ready to release the resource as a railway track understood if this railway go back okay and allow go back and release the resource as a railway track then this train can use this rail, railway track or if this train go back then this train can able to use this railway track but if both of the train are not ready to go back then in that case halted situation occur and that halted situation is called as or the deadlock i hope all of you have got the clear idea about what exactly is the deadlock understood now in now same kind of things happen in the operating system also now in the operating system as we know there are the different tasks are uh, getting executed different process are getting executed at a time understood and for the execution of that different process they need to utilize the resources as you know for in case of the computer system where you have installed the operating system the different processes for the different process to be run on the computer okay and for different task to be get completed on the computer there is a need of different kind of resources like memory processor devices information etc and who is allocating these resources this resources is allocated by the operating system understood and if operating system can't able to allocate these resources like here you have the bridge as a resource here in case of the computer system we have the resources as a memory devices processor information etc so if operating system can't able to allocate and control the resources for different process then in that case also the deadlock situation occurs okay so let's see the more thing about the deadlock and the technical definition of the deadlock in case of operating system so generally as i told you uh, the process in operating system use the different resources okay for the process to be run on the computer for different tasks to be get completed on the computer there is a necessity of utilizing the resources so uh, when the process need to utilize the resources okay uh, then uh, that process can be utilize the resources in certain sequence like there are certain ways or the steps like for the process to utilize the resources they uh, for that process first need to request the resources to the operating system so first step is what if any process want to use the resources okay then first step in order to utilize the resources is what the particular process must request the resource from operating system then that process then after the request get granted then that process can use that resource and after that process has finished the using the resource that resource should be released that resource should be released by that particular process so this is the actual ways of utilizing the resources by the different process uh, utilizing the operating system okay so here in detail i have mentioned requesting the resource means what firstly the process request the resource in case if the request cannot be granted immediately so when when the resource cannot be granted or when resource cannot be permitted for particular process when that resource is already being utilized by other process as i already i told you in today's modern system there are the multiple process are running at a time understood so when there is a one process requesting for the resource that time that resource might have been utilized by some other process understood in that case the resource cannot be granted immediately understood then that requesting process must have to wait until it can acquire the resource understood so that is the first step requesting so same thing i have shown in the diagram also process 1 okay process 1 here assign uh, process 1 has assigned the resource 1 but for the process 1 to get complete its execution it is also requiring the resource 2 so but resource 2 is already assigned to the process 2 understood so in that case process 1 has to be wait until that resource 2 is released by the process 2 understood so that is the requesting part then use so the process can operate on the resource or process can utilize the resource then after releasing by uh, so second step is after after the particular process uh, request get granted next step is what 
that resource can be utilized by that particular process understood here you can take the example of printer so printer is the device is a one resource so when now printer if one particular uh, user is printing some uh, document or using the printer at that time some another user to give the request for the printing then user to request cannot be granted or cannot be completed until the user one finishes finish its uh, utilization of printer understood so that you can take the example of printer as a device here as you can see here if the resource is a printer then in that case process can be print on the printer okay and after the one user uh, utilize the resource as a for example a printer then third third step is what that resource should be released by that particular process after releasing the resource by that process another process can utilize that resource okay so uh, this is all about the uh, when particular process uh, in operating system want to utilize the resources okay so this using these different ways the resources can be utilized by the particular process okay now so what what exactly is the deadlock in case of operating system now okay now in which case the deadlock can operate in the can occur in the operating system now in the real life example of that bridge and the train that example i explain you what exactly the deadlock now let's see what exactly the deadlock is situation in case of the operating system so first i read the definition and then we'll apply that definition here a deadlock is situation where a set of process are block block in the sense get block in the sense neither of the that process are able to uh, utilize the resource they are in the halted situation a deadlock is a situation where set of process are block because each process is holding a resource and waiting for another resource acquired by some other process okay let's apply this uh, definition here now here process 1 is already assigned process 1 is already using the resource 1 at the same time process 1 is requiring the resource 2 that is the reason here what is mentioned process 1 is waiting for the resource 2 but this resource 2 is already assigned to the process 2 this resource 2 is already assigned to the process 2 and this process 2 is also requiring another resource that is the resource 1 where that resource 1 is already assigned to the process 1 understood now in this situation what will happen so in this situation this both of the two process are block why this both of the two process are block why this both of the two process are halted the reason behind that what is what process 1 is already having the resource 1 but it is waiting for the resource 2 means what process 1 will not be get completed until it get the resource 2 understood and until the process 1 will not, will not get completed the process 1 one also will not re release the resource 1 understood same case is there in case of the process 2 here process 2 will not release the resource 1 here process 2 uh, will not release the resource 2 because re resource 2 is already assigned to the process 2 understood and process 2 will not be get completed until it will not get the resource 1 so process 2 will not release the resource 2 until it will get the resource 1 here process 1 will not release the resource 1 until it gets until it will get the resource 2 so neither of these two process will release the already allocated resources because they are requiring some other resources which is being acquired by some other process so in this case neither this process 1 will able to proceed neither this process 2 will able to proceed and if neither of these two process is able to proceed that particular situation is called as what the deadlock situation the same definition i have written here deadlock is a situation where set of process here set of process are process 1 and the process 2 are block now both of these process are block why they are block because each of this process process 1 and the process 2 is holding some resource like process 1 is holding the resource 1 process 2 is holding the resource 2 and they are waiting for another resources process 1 is waiting for the resource 2 process 2 is waiting for the resource 1 and this situation goes on and neither of this process to release their already allocated resources and they are keep on waiting for the another resources without releasing the already allocated resources that situation is called as a deadlock situation in the operating system okay
so same example in case of the train also i told you when two trains are coming towards each other on the same track and there is a only one track none of the train can move once they are in, in front of each other if none of the train go back none of the train release that resource as a train railway track then none of the train will able to proceed and that will enter into the halted situation they will enter into the indefinite waiting situation understood so here also the process one and the process two will enter into the indefinite waiting situation why because process one will not get completed until it get the resource two and process one will not release the resource one until it will get the resource two so process one keep on waiting for the resource two that is a indefinite waiting here also process two will keep on waiting for the resource one that is the indefinite waiting because process two here also need to wait indefinitely reason behind that process one process one is not going to release the resource one until it will get the resource two here process two is not going to release the resource two until it get the resource one so this whole complete halted situation is called as a deadlock in case of operating system so like the example of train a similar situation occurs in the operating system when there are the two or more processes that are holding some resources and waiting for some other resources which are already held by the other process okay so same example is shown in the diagram in the diagram process 1 is holding the resource 1 and waiting for the resource 2 which is acquired by the process 2 and process 2 is waiting for the resource 1 so they are goes on waiting indefinitely understood they have to wait indefinitely because neither of these process are ready to release the already acquired resources understood so that's the kind of situation is called as what the deadlock situation in case of the operating system okay now uh in another way i have put down the things here a deadlock is situation where the execution of two or more process is blocked or halted because each process hold some resource and wait for another resource held by other process the same situation is shown here a process p1 hold resource r1 okay and wait for the resource r2 which is held by the process p2 now how you can identify the particular process has hold resource and it is waiting for another resource so if the arrow is shown towards the process like this if the arrow is shown towards the process like this arrow then it means that process p1 is holding the resource r1 or r1 resource is allocated to the p1 if arrow is shown away from the particular process like this if the arrow is shown away from the particular process it means this process p1 is requiring the resource r2 or process p1 is waiting for the resource r2 so this diagram easily shows you the situation of the deadlock okay as you can see here process p1 holding the resource r1 and waiting for the resource r2 which is held by the process p2 p1 is holding the resource r1 and it is waiting for the r2 same situation p2 p2 is holding the resource r2 and it is waiting for the r1 which is already being holded by the which is already being uh, process p2 is uh, holding the resource r2 and waiting for the resource r1 where r1 is already holded by the p1 okay so none of the two process can complete and release their resources and because of that both of these process keep waiting indefinitely infinitely both of these process keep waiting indefinitely or infinitely and that situation is called as the deadlock situation in case of the operating system i hope all of you understood okay so here uh, you can see here uh, the process p1 and p2 are in the deadlock which process are in the deadlock p1 and the p2 because each of them each of these process need the resource of others to complete their execution process p1 cannot be get completed until it get the resource r2 and process p2 cannot be get completed until it get the resource r1 but these resources already be high hold held by each other each other this this require this process p1 requiring the r2 but it is already holded by the r2 uh, p2 and r p2 requiring the r1 which is already uh, held by the uh, p1 so same thing i have mentioned here p1 and p2 are in the deadlock because 
each of them needs the resources of resources of others to complete their education but neither of them is willing to give up their resources even p1 is requiring the r2 so p1 can cannot release the r1 here because p1 completion cannot be happen until it will have the r1 and r2 at the same time similarly p2 p2 execution cannot be completed until it will have the r2 and r1 same time so it will this kind of situation cannot be get sorted out understood and both of them goes on waiting for each other and that is the situation called as a deadlock situation in case of the operating system okay so i hope all, all of you understood the basic concept of deadlock okay now next is a, another important point uh, which is being uh, asked in the exam number of times okay so here uh, next point that we have to discuss is nothing but different conditions responsible for deadlock means what because of which different reasons or because of which different conditions that might occur in the uh, computer system and uh, that might uh, occur in case of uh, operating system when operating system is controlling and allocating the resources so which are that conditions uh, because of which the deadlock can occur so these are the four important condition because of deadlock can occur in case of computer system so which are that conditions first is the mutual exclusion second is a hold and wait and then no preemption and circular wait so each of these uh, condition we will discuss in detail with the example okay so these are the condition which are uh, responsible for the deadlock in case of uh, uh, computer system okay so here i have mentioned there are the following four necessary condition for uh, occurrence of the deadlock okay in case of computer system okay where we are utilizing the operating system okay so first important condition is the mutual exclusion what mutual exclusion now what do you mean by the mutual exclusion that you need to understand first mutual exclusion in the sense what there can be a resource r1 okay and this resource r1 can be utilized by only one process at a time this resource r1 can be utilized by only one process at a time that particular that particular uh, condition is called as a mutual exclusion condition what is the condition a resource particular single resource can be utilized by only the single process at a time the resource cannot be get shared that particular condition is called as or the mutual exclusion so by this condition i have written there must exist at least one resource in the system which can be used by only one process at a time so if there is a certain kind of resources are there which can be utilized by only one process at a time understood then that particular condition is called as or the mutual exclusion condition now what can be the example for this the example can be the printer so printer is a kind of device which you can call which you can call as a resource so printer is a resource which can be utilized by only one process at a time because only one user can give the printer can give the print on the printer at a time understood if one user as a process p1 is printing on the printer at a time other user cannot print at print at that same time other user can give the request for printing and other user p2 has to, has to be wait until the p1 as a user or process p1 finish the printing so printer is you can take the example of printer as a mutually exclusive resource understood and mutually exclusive resource in the sense what that resource can be utilized by only one process at a time understood and if such kind of condition occurs that only one resource can utilize the process uh, only one uh, resource only one process can utilize that resource at a time as i said printer as a r1 resource okay which can be utilized by only one process at a time but if this process p1 never finish its work of printing then p2 might go into the infinite waiting situation p2 has to go to the infinite waiting situation in that case the deadlock can occur when when p1 will never release this resource as a printer p1 will never able to finish its work then p2 has to wait infinitely in that case the p2 we can say goes into the deadlock situation 
so that is the reason here i have mentioned ki what exactly mean by the mutual exclusion there must exist at least one resource in the system which can be used by only one process at a time then that total condition is called as a mutual exclusion condition if there exists no such resource then deadlock will never occur means what if there is a certain resource which can be utilized by multiple process at a time then there that resource cannot we cannot say that resource is a mutually exclusive understood we cannot say that in that case if the certain resource can be utilized by multiple process at a time then we cannot say that particular resource is mutually exclusive accessible understood because multiple process can utilize that resource at a time so if this is the situation multiple process can utilize the resource at a time then deadlock cannot be occur when deadlock can occur when the mutual exclusion is there when when there is a certain condition where only one process can utilize that resource at a time and that only one process will never release that resource then other resource then other process cannot utilize that resource in that case other process has to wait infinitely and because of that the deadlock can occur okay so printer is the example of such a resource that is the mutually exclusion resource that can be used by only one process at a time okay so in this diagram you can see there is a single instance of resource r1 and it is held by process 112 then this is called as a mutual exclusion access to the resource if there are some other process p2 p3 p3 p4 they are also want to utilize this resource this process cannot utilize this resource until it is released by the process p1 there cannot be a shareable access to this resource in case of the mutual exclusion understood so because of that the deadlock can occur okay let's see the next important condition for the deadlock occurrence that is the hold and wait condition okay what hold and wait condition now what exactly is this hold and wait condition let's let's understand okay there must exist a process which holding some resource there is there must be a one process which is holding the one resource and wait for another resource which is held by some other process means there can be a one process which is holding the resource okay and that process is also waiting for another resource which is being already hold by some other process understood then that particular condition is called as hold and wait condition okay so here i have mentioned a process can hold multiple resource and still request some more resources from other process which are holding them understood so here in the diagram you can have you can see the process p2 the process p2 is a holding the resource r2 and the r3 so process p2 is holding the resource r2 and r3 and process p2 is requesting requesting in the sense it is waiting for resource r1 which is already being allocated to the process p1 so that condition this particular situation is called as what hold and wait okay this condition is called as what hold and wait now because of hold and wait how the deadlock can occur let's see now process p2 is holding the r2 and r3 and it is waiting for the r1 for process p2 to get completed it needs the r2 r3 and also the r1 so this process p2 is not going to release the r2 and the r3 until it will get the r1 but there might be a other process like process p3 there can be a process p4 p5 which are requiring this resource r2 r3 now what is about this p3 p4 this p3 p4 need to be wait infinitely this p3 p4 need to wait infinitely because this resource is already hold by the process p2 and it is waiting for the resource uh, r1 which is holded by the p1 understood so if a p2 will not get the r1 the p2 is not going to release the r2 and r3 understood now in which case the process p2 will not get the resource r1 until it will not give until it will not get released by the process p1 and if the process p1 never release the resource r1 the process p2 will never get the resource r1 and if the process p2 will not never get the r1 it will also not release the r2 and r3 and in that case this other process need to be wait infinitely for r2 and r3 and because of that situation the deadlock can occur so because of holding the already allocated resources and waiting for other resources which is already 
holded by some other process so that is the condition is called as hold and wait and because of that the deadlock can occur and how it can occur that already i told okay so that is the second condition that is the hold and wait condition next third important condition because of which deadlock occurs that is the no preemption what no preemption okay now what do you mean by the no preemption that you need to understood first so by this condition once the resource has been allocated to the process it cannot be preempted it cannot be preempted in the sense it cannot be released it cannot be released by that process until that process execution get finish or it cannot be released by that process until that uh, until the execution will get finished means what releasing the of that resource is completely depends on the desire of that particular process is complete depend on will of that particular process understood means what resource cannot be snatch forcefully from one process and can be given to the other process means you cannot take the resources from one particular process forcefully understood you cannot take the resource from that particular process forcefully that resource you can get only if that process release that resource voluntarily voluntarily in the sense only if that particular process is having the desire to release that resource forcefully you can you cannot snatch or you cannot take the resource from that particular process that is called as a no preemption means what the process must get release resource voluntarily itself no preemption means what you cannot take the resource uh, forcefully from that process that resource can be released only on only on the basis of desire of that particular process desire of that process in the sense it can be released voluntarily by that particular process means if that process want to release that resource then only that resource can be released that is that is called as a voluntarily releasing the resource if that process don't want to release the resource you cannot take the resource forcefully from that process understood that is called as a no preemption okay then when you can call the preemptive condition if you can forcefully take the resource from that process that is called as a preemptive condition understood but that is not possible here in case of the non preemptive condition you cannot uh, forcefully take the resource from that particular process that is the reason it is called as a no preemption understood a resource cannot be preempted from a process by a force a process can only release the resource voluntarily voluntarily in the sense if that process want to release then only that uh, resource can release if that process don't want to release then that resource cannot be released so same thing is shown in the diagram in the diagram process p2 cannot preempt the resource r1 process p2 cannot preempt the resource r1 from process p1 it will only release when the process p1 relinquish it voluntarily after its execution is complete now here in this case process p2 is already allocated the resource r2 but process p2 is requesting the resource r1 it means what process p2 to get completed it also requiring the resource r1 but resource r1 is allocated to the process p1 understood and process p1 can you cannot take the resource r1 from the process p1 forcefully means e1 this process p2 priority is higher even if this process p2 priority is higher as compared with the process p1 even that also these resources cannot be taken forcefully from this process p1 it cannot it can be really it can be it can it, this resource r1 can become available only if the process p1 finish its execution and process p1 want to release that resource you cannot take away the resource r1 from the p1 forcefully understood so that is called as a no preemption and now because of the no preemptive condition how the deadlock can occur now this process p1 never release the resource r1 means what the process p1 execution never get finished then process p2 can enter into the indefinite waiting situation yes or no yes the process p2 will enter with the infinite waiting situation when when process p1 never want to release the resource because 
you cannot forcefully take the resource r1 from the p1 yeah. when it can be released only it can be released only when when process p1 thinks that when process p1 ready to release it but if the process p1 never release then process p2 will go to the infinite waiting situation halted situation and that is the reason the deadlock can occur because of the non primitive condition i hope all of you understood what do you mean by the non primitive non primitive mean, means what resource can be released only on the desire of that particular process forcefully you cannot take out the resource means what resource can be released voluntarily by that particular process itself you cannot take out the or operating system cannot take out that resources forcefully from that process so because of this non primitive condition also deadlock occurs that i have explained okay here comes the last condition that is the circular wait condition because of that also the deadlock can occur so first you need to understood the what exactly mean by the circular wait condition okay here i have put down in the words so circular wait in the sense the process are waiting for the resources in the cyclic manner here i have mentioned all the process must wait for the resource in the cyclic manner where the last process wait for the resource which is hold by the first process so that is called as a circular waiting so same thing i have mentioned a process is waiting for the resource held by the second process which is waiting for the resource held by the third process and that third process also waiting for the resource which is held by the fourth process likewise till the last process is waiting for the resource held by the first process so if the last process is waiting for the resource which is held by the first process there your cycle get completed so this waiting of all the process for the resources in this cyclic manner it form the particular circular chain and that particular waiting of processes for the resources in the cyclic manner that is called as a circular wait so because of that circular wait also the red lock can occur so same thing is mentioned here so here you can see the example of circular wait here consider here only two processes are there okay here the process p1 is allocated the resource r2 okay and it is requesting the resource r1 the process p1 is requiring the resource r1 okay and process p2 is already allocated the resource r1 and for the process p2 to be get completed it require the resource r2 that is that it is it is that is the reason it is requesting the resource r2 but this resource r2 is already holded by the p1 okay and p1 is requesting the r1 where r1 is already holded by the p2 so this form the cycle so this p1 and p2 are waiting for the resources in the cyclic manner understood they are waiting in the cyclic manner that is considered as a circular waiting it is called as what circular waiting all the process when all the process are waiting for the resource in the cyclic manner where the last process waits for the resource held by the first process here if you consider p2 as the last process it is waiting for the resource held by the first process so this cyclic waiting this circular waiting is also responsible for the deadlock situation that you can easily see here and that is the another reason for the deadlock to be get occur so if these different conditions occurs then there can be a deadlock situation can easily occurs in case of the particular system and in case of the certain operating system has to handle these kind of deadlock situations okay so that is all about the what exactly is the deadlock and because of which different reasons because of the which different conditions that might occur in the uh, system the deadlock can happen in the system understood so next we have to see how the deadlock can be detected how to handle the deadlock that is our uh, point of the next lecture so in the next lecture we'll discuss about the how the deadlock can be get detected and how the deadlock uh, can be handled that will be uh, our discussion in the next lecture so that is all about the today's lecture i hope all of you understood this please comment uh, in the comment box if you have any doubt okay thank you all of you